A question for Richard. Why do you think DF is the only, in brackets, last uh, best uh, gaming technology news slash reviews channel? I recall back to an era long forgotten where PC gaming magazines would be full of gaming tech articles covering anti-aliasing methods and interviews with developers and creative producers, etc. But other than DF, none of that made it into the social media slash video age. What happened? Um, good question. How do you answer this one? I think basically the nature of media has changed where um, there's a pressure to get new content out en masse as soon as possible, right? And that's just not how you do digital foundry work. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, it took us three, four years to actually break even, to actually make this a financially viable enterprise. It's not, not, not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but, you know, there have been some interesting articles recently. I noticed PC Gamer did um, quite a big explainer on mesh shaders and uh, why they're, what they are and why they're needed for Alan Wake too. But, yeah, I kind of get cool. what they're saying there. Um, John, thoughts? Uh, I mean, I don't think we're not the only ones doing it, I guess. No. But it's not, it's not, I guess it's not that common because... Uh, it does demand like a, such a serious time commitment to do this stuff well, I think. And like, I think with the way sites are generally run, that's difficult to allow, right? Justify. Yeah. To, to justify uh, financially and just in terms of time commitment. I mean, it's usually about getting news out as fast as possible and having an entire team dedicated to doing these types of things where it's like each singular project is going to take at least a week usually uh that's a tough one i think and you need some you need somebody at the top that's really interested and they really want to do this and make it great and you know we obviously have that here mm -hmm. with the man himself there well and back in the day rupert loman obviously oh yeah Ru rupert as well very su that's exactly right we wouldn't be here if not for rupert actually supporting that whole idea right like mm -hmm. he made it possible to actually turn this into something that's viable yeah, it's it's a it's a tricky one. That's all I can really say about this. But you've basically got to back quality, and you've got to um, uh, have confidence that that quality will actually result in an audience. And you know, if it took us three, four years to actually make this whole thing viable, then that's the challenge facing anybody that's going to come into this market, into this area of the market, this very specific niche of the market. I think on the plus side. Um, although it's, you know, I'd, I'd say that the tech press for, for PC is in a pretty good state at the moment. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of really successful outlets out there, which have, you know, but they too have done the hard work, right? You know, Gamers Absolutely. Nexus is a, is, a, is a great example of a channel that took years to develop into what it is today. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, the, the mainstream press doesn't really seem that interested in... Uh, the sort of stuff that that we cover that much these days they may and, not know anything about it either that's the thing <laughs> that's yeah yeah i mean that's Niche the other thing of course because, yeah it's really yeah. difficult to find out uh, people who can do the job uh, do you have anything to add to this alex uh, from a pc uh, perspective yeah. i also think news cycles are pretty important part of it obviously it's uh so if you start at one project and you've got a lot of ways in it but then something comes out and you really need to report on it you can interrupt it regardless of whatever your initial intention was because you need to make sure you're covering something because the audience wants to see it and it will definitely help the bottom line so it's not it's not always just um it's like sometimes you do need to keep up with what everyone else is doing just to even stay afloat so mm. like we do videos at times where it's like we know we're covering it not because of our personal interests. Like sometimes I'd rather be covering something else, but because I know the audience wants to see this. So it's, it's a pull, it's a tug and pull. It's hard. It's not just one source of why the way things, the way they are. I think it's just that this work is really hard and yeah. games have got a lot more complex and you have to be on top of a lot of the new stuff that's happening. And it's it, a lot of it's really difficult to follow, right? And that's what we try and do here. I mean, obviously, um, you know, we try and act as, um, you know, basically trying to explain it to a, a wider audience. A lot of this stuff that's happening, mm -hmm. uh, but it's 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 really difficult, you know. <clears throat> yeah, that's just. I mean, 
that's the thing with these projects. There's the figuring it all out kind of thing. There's actually playing yeah. the game and there's the capturing it, you know, figuring out what you want to say, what you want to write, you know, getting all the hard legwork done there. And then there's editing the thing, the production stuff, the filming stuff. You know, we don't have yeah. a team of people doing that. Like we each do our own thing, right? Yeah. And that's, which is rewarding, but it does take time. Yeah, and, uh, what I will uh, say, necessary. I, I mean, the concept of doing a written piece of work for a website is uh, far, far easier than doing a video. Yes. You know? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just you know, screenshots and, and text, really, which is basically, you know, the very, very beginnings of a video project. Uh, yep, yeah, pretty the much. Assets. Yeah, wow. I didn't really think about that, but that is certainly true. It's uh, it's video uh. is just a completely different enterprise. Um, I don't really know what more we can really add to that one, except to say that, um, you know, I'd love to see other people do this stuff as well. The issue is that, you know, coming into this and doing it straight off the bat, it's, it's just not easy. Uh, it's a lot of growing pains. Um, and yeah, because yeah. there's... We can't cover everything. That's the thing. There's stuff no. that I want to know that I'm curious about that we don't have time to even look at. And it's yeah, like, this happens all the time. Like all that PC myth busting. We talk about it. Like there's just not enough time. In the world. Yeah, there's always more ideas than there are videos. That's the bottom line. Just yeah. because it yeah. takes so long to make each piece <laughs> yes. of content. Really. Actually, if there's one thing I would like AI to do, and this is nothing. <laughs> this is like it's not about uh -oh. taking my job away from me. But if it could somehow make my editing process easier, not editing the video for me, but like you know, like obviously the creative thing is that's all me. But like the manually moving my hand across the screen to like cut up videos, etc. That's all stuff that you know that could be aided by AI in any sense of the word. Really? So maybe. Maybe. How would it please, know what to cut? AI bros. You do your work, your magic. <laughs> How about this? It's like you're capturing the game live and you just you say, oh, Premiere, put this shot in there. And it just oh, like captures so it and sticks it on the timeline for you. Okay. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in uh, the realms of science fiction here. Like, yeah, we you? are. <laughs> the AI is a cure. -all. No, 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 definitely not. No.